Hey there, I am Uchia and welcome to my Beats and Bobs. Recently I took part in a beatmaking contest organized by a Facebook group of francophone music makers called Secret de Beatmaker and that went pretty well. So as I made a couple of beats for this contest, I thought I might let you hear them and browse this through my thought process and how I created them, tackling the rules that were given to us. So let's deconstruct this. Secret Beatmaker is a very nice French-speaking Facebook group that I've been following for quite some time now, where a lot of music makers help each other out all the time. So the admins of this group challenged everybody to a beatmaking contest. For the first selection, they asked us to send any beat, with a length limit of one minute and a half. At this time I was working on the video I made with Daralia, that I will link there. So as I wanted to take part to the challenge but didn't have much time to create a new beat, I've sent them the beat that I made for that video, that I made with Daralia's cosplay materials. <laughs> I won't deconstruct this one here, as I already did that in the cosplay video. But again, if you want to watch it, you'll find it by clicking on the little eye at the top of the screen. So Circuit Beatmaker received 80 participations, and I was taken among the 16 selected for the second phase of this competition. For this second phase, we had to make one beat of one minute and a half again. Starting from Trap Elements, we had to make something half dub and half tango. This one was a little bit confusing for me. I don't know tango a lot, but to me, it seems more like a fast-paced genre compared to dub. And I see it more like on the beat, whereas dub would be more on the offbeat. And the starting with trap elements was a bit confusing as well. Trap music relies a lot on its huge bass that derives from the TR-808 bass. And for the drums, I guess it's often an 808 as well. But apart from that, you could put anything on top and make your own trap beat. So I just downloaded a free trap pack from Cymatics and started from there. After listening to some tango music for a few days, I made a list of the most used instruments that I could try to implement to my beat. Acoustic guitar, piano, accordion, and strings like violin or cello. That was a lot of acoustic instruments for the tango part. And that was cool, because dub can be a lot more electronic, so I could use the trap sounds for this part. So I've put one of the bass samples from the pack into a simpler and looped it to play longer notes. To me, the bass in dub is very dominant, almost too loud, so I doubled it an octave lower to get a fuller sound. I used the rest of the sample pack for my drums and I had some fun with the snare. I've put an EQ on it and added a point just where the frequency of resonance was, and it could really transform the sound just with one point. And I also added an organ that would play on the offbeat to give this reggae vibe that dub has. Then I duplicated some of those sounds to have them in a ping-pong delay and some reverb, because delay is a good part of dub. And there I had all my elements so I could start my beat. Here with the first section, I really went for the full tango, with all the instruments playing in the same tango rhythm. Put the piano with the accordion, joined later by the guitar and the strings to make some kind of build-up. I also added some castanet to add to the rhythm and to have a more Spanish touch. I added a riser to support the build-up, at the end of which I turned all the ping-pong delays and reverbs on. And then I automated some pitches up and down, as well as some delay times, to give this feeling that we were diving into some kind of fog. After a little gap, the dub part drops, with the bass, the drum and the organ. From there and onward, I reintroduced the tango instruments, so we could end on a nice mix between the two. And that's the part I was the most stressed about, so I wanted to add some more elements to sound a little bit more Spanish. To do so, I based all my chord progression on an Andalusian cadence, which is a chord progression used a lot in flamenco. I will talk more in detail about this Andalusian cadence soon, in an episode of Music Theory in 5 minutes that is already written. The rhythmic guitars and the castinets are also more flamenco-ish than tango. On that note, I'd like to shoot out to Dreamtouch, one of the jury, for picking that up. He got a bit confused apparently about these flamenco elements, where he was expecting more tango elements. And lastly, I added some melody with the guitar and the piano. The purpose here being to keep the beats in motion, to have always something new happening. I didn't want them to get bored after one minute and a half. And I hope you won't neither. So here is the song I sent them for this second phase. Tell me in the comments what you think about these beats.
With these beats, I was selected with seven other music makers to be challenged in the third phase of the contest. This phase was very different. The rule here was to make some kind of film music that had to depict three deadly scenes. Lust, wrath and sloth. We had two weeks to make each beat, but for this one, I was away on holiday in the middle of France countryside, away from internet, away from my speakers I normally use. So I knew I wouldn't have much time to put in this one. And even if we could make a four minute song for this one, I went for a two minute format. I thought that would be enough to showcase the ideas I had, and I didn't want to send a long, totally unpolished track. So a movie music. I had pictures in my mind. I thought about starting with some dark soundscape, like we were entering hell, you know, because that's where the deadly scenes belong, right? So I had to go for something shocking, unpredictable and unsettling. I knew what I had to do. So I divided this beat into four parts. The intro, that would be a general atmosphere of hell. Lust, that would be playful, sensual and lewd. Wrath, that would be loud and violent, unpredictable and intimidating. And sloth, that would be slow, emptier but unsettling. So for the first part, I layered some impact sounds, creakings and scream samples that I already had on my computer and I drummed them in some reverb, like it was coming from distance. It also made it sound more cavernous. Then I added some contrast by altering between very saturated sound and screams, with each sound being cut very sharply. Then with the next section, the real fun begins. For this section, I wanted to have something very rock and roll with heavy guitars, something close to the opening theme of the series Lucifer. So I layered the guitars, the bass and the drums to get this riff. I kept the tempo quite low because I thought it conveyed better the sensuality and also the darkness. And to add even more sensuality and to be not subtle at all, I added some girls moaning sample that I have downloaded from freesounds.com. This part finishes on a build-up, where I added several risers, I slide almost all the instruments to play faster and faster, and I automated the pitch of the guitars. And this leads us to the wrath part. I wanted it to be very crazy, so I added three main elements. A very distorted kick, a sample I had from my search of Girls Morning Sounds, God! and a drum break from NT by Cool and the Gang. In this sample of the girl screaming oh my god, I isolated this tiny screaming part, stretched it as much as I could and pitched it down to get this. Good start for an angry part. And with the drum break, I chopped it up in many ways and made it sound like a blast beat. And that's pretty much it for this part. Combined with some risers from the beginning to add tension, and after another build-up, we arrive at the sloth part. This part is basically the same riff than from the lust part, but only with the bass and the drums. And then I added some violin notes. Halftone intervals are often a bit daunting, especially when harmonized randomly. On that, I added some other elements from the intro, to have unity in the sound, but also to have this creepy vibe. Combined with the tempo slowing down little by little, I wanted to give this feeling of being crippled by sloth and taken over by scene when you chill out too much and it's kind of dragging you down slowly. Anyway, enough speaking about the beat and what I wanted to do with it, here is why I sent them after two days of working on it plus one day to mix it on headphones. Tell me what you think in the comments.
consensus for this one was that they would have liked to have each part developed a bit more because two minutes was quite short. And then I ranked on fifth place and only the top four were selected for the next phase. Looking back at it, I wonder if I had put more time into it, if I would have earned this extra place to be selected. But all in all, doing this kind of contest is very cool. And it's very cool as well to have feedbacks from experienced people. And that was pretty fun to do, especially with the rules and the challenges I wouldn't have done otherwise. It's kind of daunting at the beginning, but I think it's really worth it. I may do more in the future, so let me know in the comments if you like this kind of beat deconstruction, or if you'd like more or less details on each track for the next one. Big shout out to JB Bouchard from White Gorilla Studio and Zoom Maestro, the admins of Circuit Beatmaker for making this contest. And shout out to the two guests in the jury as well, Dreamtouch and DC for their feedbacks. And finally, big shout out to Clyde Bessie, James Darko, Apperpod and Jose Akamens who are still in the race for this contest. Good luck for each of them and I can't wait to hear what they make for the next round. In the meantime, if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the next one. Take care and I'll see you next time.